Honestly, I love Easter eggs. Oh, I don't mean like the chocolate ones that you get during Easter, but honestly, I love those ones too. But I mean like the little details that directors hide in their movies. Hey everyone, welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10 and welcome to today's video. I'm your host, Lindsay Ivan, and today I'm bringing you Top 10 Dark Details in Horror Movies That You Never Noticed, Part 2. I filmed a part one to this video already, so if you haven't seen it, make sure you check it out as well. All right, starting off at number 10, we have The Descent. The Descent is a 2005 drama surrounding a group of six friends that go cave exploring. However, this isn't a Dora the Explorer episode, so the women get trapped and lost in the cave. Soon after, they encounter these creepy creatures called crawlers. The crawlers are actually cavemen that have been living there for thousands of years. Although lacking eyesight, they still function perfectly in the dark. Terrifying. Well, in this film, a crawler is actually seen on screen before the characters even encounter them. This happens soon after they enter the cave. If you pay attention, the crawler can be seen for a brief moment when the character shines her flashlight on the cave walls. If you picked up on this, then you have a good eye because this little detail was hard to spot. It is also the first clue to suggest that these women aren't the only ones lurking around the cave. I will have the video linked down below so you can see it for yourself. Next up at number 9, we have The Thing. See, the thing with this one, get it? The thing, yeah, whatever, is that this movie literally gave out huge clues as to what's going to happen right at the beginning of the movie. The only way you could have caught this is if you speak Norwegian. Let me explain. So the thing is about a shape-shifting alien type creature that can transform into anything that they consume. This can be from animals to humans. Now the opening scene in the 1982 version of the movie shows a helicopter with a man trying to shoot down a dog. After doing several terrible attempts at doing it, a stranger stops them and yells something in Norwegian. Well, turns out that this something translates to Get the hell out of here, that's not a dog, it's some sort of thing, it's imitating a dog, it isn't real. Well, well. If only they spoke Norwegian, then they could have definitely been saved. Definitely would have been a shorter movie, that's for sure. In our eighth spot, we have Jason Goes to Hell. This movie surrounds the notorious killer Jason and his return to Crystal Lake. Now, in this movie, there is a reference to the other horror film, Evil Dead. There is a scene where the character Duke appears to be flipping through an old book. This book is in fact the Necronomicon from Evil Dead. In fact, they use the actual Necronomicon book that was used in Evil Dead for this scene. So this may suggest that they appear in the same universe. Or it could just be like a fun little easter egg that the director wanted to throw in. Either way, I don't need to be thinking about Jason and the creatures from Evil Dead haunting me. That's a terrifying duo. Moving on to number 7, we have Saw. Now, Saw is a successful franchise created by James Wan. There are several movies to this franchise and even some video games and comic books. Now, in the very first movie, it surrounds two men who are being tormented by someone by the name of Jigsaw. These men have to try to escape the twisted torment of this killer. Now, at the end of the movie, spoiler alert, it is revealed that Jigsaw was actually the man on the floor playing dead the whole time. He's a great actor. This guy's name is John Kramer and he has terminal cancer. Now in one of the scenes we can see John laying in his hospital bed. What you may not have noticed is that in front of him is his open notebook with a drawing of one of his killing devices, the reverse bear trap. How on earth did we miss this? Like it literally shows you who the killer is way before the ending. I feel like next time I watch a scary movie I need to just pause it every five seconds and inspect the screen just to make sure. Moving on to number six, we have The Dark Tower. The Dark Tower by Stephen King is a 2017 film adaptation of his book with the same name. Now, this movie is filled with dark references to other Stephen King works of art. The most blatant one is when the protagonist, Jake, is walking through an abandoned fairground. During the scene, he encounters an old statue of just a hand protruding out of the ground holding three balloons. This is obviously supposed to be Pennywise the Clown from It. Then the shot changes to a wide shot and reveals an old dilapidated sign that reads, Pennywise. This is a huge indicator that these stories occur in the same universe. Some people even theorize that the villain in the Dark Tower, known as Crimson King, is even related to Pennywise. Now, in this film, there's also a reference to The Shining. In one scene, you can see a picture of the lodge from The Shining on the therapist's desk. Then, in another scene, towards the beginning of the film, two twin girls can be seen. People believe that they are a reference to the well-known Shining Twins. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the classic film, Donnie Darko. Donnie Darko stars Jake Gyllenhaal as 
whoa, Donnie Darko. A teen boy who one night encounters Frank, a strange figure in a rabbit costume. Frank then warns Donnie that the world is going to end in 28 days. Now, Frank isn't the only rabbit that appears in the film. In fact, there are so many references to rabbits all throughout it. In one scene, you can see Donnie carving a pumpkin that looks just like Frank. In another scene, the song The Killing Moon by The Echo and the Bunny Men is heard while a Volkswagen rabbit drives by. Then you also have a stuffed animal rabbit that is seen next to his sister as she sleeps. And lastly, there's also a photo of Donnie dressed up as a rabbit. So this rabbit symbolism was used all throughout the film. Now, some people believe that Frank is a symbol of an angel that's sent to Earth to guide Donnie to save it, which is interesting since he looks completely opposite to anything angelic. Other people believe that Frank is supposed to parallel the white rabbit from Alice in Wonderland. In Alice in Wonderland, the white rabbit's famous line is, I'm late, I'm late for a very important date. Well, similar to the rabbit, Frank is also under a time crunch as he only has 28 days before the world ends. These are just theories though, let me know what yours is in the comments below. Either way, this film did a good job highlighting the importance of Frank's character by these subtle rabbit details. Coming in at number 4 we have Insidious Chapter 2. In the second installment of the Insidious series, the family is still being haunted by evil spirits that are tormenting and possessing their family. Now, I did mention Insidious in my last video and how the audience can see the ghosts hidden in the scene before the characters encounter them. But here's another detail in chapter 2 that you may not have noticed. In one of the scenes, there is a close up of their VCR, but instead of it reading Panasonic, it has some letters scratched out and it reads Panic. Now, I know that this could have been done for like legal reasons if they couldn't have the brand name electronic in their film, but either way, it just adds another layer of creep to the film. And honestly, the decision to do this was super clever. Next up at number three, we have the film Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. Now, this film is an adaptation of the book with the same name. This movie is about a group of kids that break into an abandoned mansion and release the evil held within a young girl's book. Eventually, the scary stories that are written in the book come to life and haunt the kids. Now, one really subtle detail that you probably didn't catch or even focus on too carefully is the music. The music varies depending on what story they are on. The story Harold has more guitar and banjo, the story The Big Toe has a lot of brass, The Red Spot incorporates string instruments, The Pale Lady uses woodwinds, and The Jangly Man uses heavy percussion. The composer wanted each story to be unique from the one before. And this is super well done. The score is so haunting that it makes the movie that much creepier. Moving on to number two, we have The Cabin in the Woods. The Cabin in the Woods is about a group of friends that go on a little getaway to a cabin in the woods. Yes, yes, you got it. However, soon this retreat turns into a nightmare as they get attacked by numerous creatures. Now, in this movie, you can see references to multiple monsters from other movies. This occurs in the underground laboratory where a whiteboard is seen with lists of the creatures. Then, towards the end of the movie, you can see tons of monsters in their own little cells. Some of the monsters listed were Hellord, which is a reference to Pinhead and Hellraiser. You have Deadites, which are from Evil Dead, and Reanimated, which is a reference to the movie The Reanimator. Now, in the ending scene, if you pause and observe the monsters, you can see Pennywise, the girls from The Shining, and characters from the game Left 4 Dead. It's terrifying knowing that tons of monsters from the scariest horror movies could just be released into this universe. Like, clowns are scary enough as is, but imagine Pennywise and the twins from The Shining teaming up against you? Yeah, no thanks. That's Nightmare Central. And coming in our number one spot, we have Get out. Get Out is a 2017 thriller directed by Jordan Peele. I love this movie. It was such an original and scary film. And in fact, it won the Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay. Now, this film is filled with amazing acting performances, such as the scene where Rose, played by Allison Williams, is talking to another character named Rod. During this chilling phone call scene, she remains expressionless the entire time, while still having panic in her voice. That's incredible acting. Anyways, shortly after, Rose is seen eating Fruit Loops, but not the typical way. She's drinking milk with a straw and then eating a bowl of just plain Fruit Loops. She even eats the Fruit Loops in little tiny bits and does little tiny sips of the milk. Now, 
I totally overlooked this detail. But Jordan Peele said it was to emphasize the creepiness and craziness of her character and show that she's not normal. She's also shown browsing on Bing instead of Google to further emphasize this. Lastly, on the wall behind her is her collection of photos of her victims. The photos used to be hidden away, but in this scene, all the photos are back up on the wall. It just shows how proud she is of her and her family's unlawful and insane activities. Now, my question is, how do you eat your cereal? Do you pour your cereal then your milk? Cause I do. Or are you just weird and pour your milk and then the cereal? Let me know in the comments below. And that's it for today's video. Let me know in the comments below if you have seen any good horror movies lately. I'm always looking for new ones to add to my list. Now, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to Most Amazing Top 10 for more amazing videos. I've been your host, Lindsay Ivan, and I'll see you when I see you. Thank you.